So we are back. We were just discussing what will happen in Kashmir and does God know the future? And the answer was yes, God knows the future, but he can't change it. So we were having this discussion and became quite uh, heated, I would say, or quite intense about Kashmir and how to solve the Kashmir problem. Um, so somehow we got cut off right at that critical time. So I see that uh, Qadir Unisa is back on. Uh, would you like to join us? We can have a discussion here. I will... Uh, let's see. I am going to see if Qadir Unisa wants to join us because she is a, a high court advocate in Indian Hyderabad and uh, see if she wants to join us on this chat. <laughs> It's a very controversial subject. She may not want to. <laughs> anyway, so actually when we were cut off, I was just talking uh, about her and to her and asking her if she uh, could please take this vow and encourage her Muslim friends uh, in Hyderabad and all over India to please take this vow to stop eating beef. Uh, this is actually, I have been told very, very clearly, this is the solution. This will bring about uh, peace, not only in Kashmir, but between India and Pakistan. If the Muslims in India will vow to stop eating beef, that will also <laughs> encourage the Hindus to stop uh, slaughter of cows and exporting cows' meat, which is, of course, happening. Uh, it's a very disgusting thing for from a Hindu point of view that India is the second largest exporter of beef in the world after Brazil. So... Uh, Let's, let us do this. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay. So anyway, I don't see that she's coming on. So I will continue. I'm sorry that I won't be able to now see the previous questions that people had asked or comments. So if anybody, if anybody is willing... see the questions that you asked before, so you may repeat them. Let's see if Qadir Unisa is going to join us. I'm inviting her. <laughs> She's a wonderful, very intelligent person and a very patriotic Indian citizen, really. Uh, too much so, in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, in any case, we'll see if she's going to come on, because I've invited her again. I'm getting a message from Facebook, Unisa Ji, that you're being added, so I hope you can come on. In any case, I'll go on and look at the other questions and see if there are um, any important questions. Shehan Azhar Ahir. Hello, sir. How are you? How can I join NOI, sir? Oh, well, this is a different question, a different topic. He's asking how he can join the Nation of Islam. Um, just look it up on the internet. <laughs> Nation of Islam has their website. You can ask them. I have talked about the Nation of Islam recently. Islam is a true Islamic movement, a true Islamic organization. Many people, because there's been a lot of propaganda against the Nation of Islam uh, by the American FBI particularly. A lot of false uh, things have been done against the Nation of Islam. So many people have a, have a bad impression of it. But uh, I've been told, despite that bad impression that I also had myself before, that it's a racist organization. Uh, no, it is a true Islamic organization. It is not racist. Uh, so please look it up on the Nation of Islam website, and I'm sure you can easily find out all the information you, know, you need to know if you want to join them. Okay, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Sonia Abbasi is asking, Hello, how bad do you think the situation would be if both the armies fought? Well, it would be very bad, especially if they used nuclear weapons, which I think it is reasonable to assume that even though it is totally insane, uh, when their back is against the wall, the losing party would resort to atomic weapons. As if they're losing, why wouldn't they use their atomic bombs? And both, of course, have them. So uh, it would be horrible if the armies fought. So let us try our best through prayer, through negotiation, 
through appealing to our friends uh, to prevent a war. Um, it may not look very hopeful right now, but God can do anything. So I believe that God can prevent a war, as I believe he has in the past. I have said many times, in 1984, uh, Israel and India attacked or launched an attack on the Pakistani nuclear facility. And uh, fortunately, the Pakistanis found out about it, and they had the entire Pakistan Air Force was in the air, circling over the Pakistani atomic facility, and that way the attack was stopped. If that attack had happened, uh, there would have been a war, probably a worldwide nuclear war. So it was prevented in 1984. Again, in 1999, uh, it was destined, really, and that there would be a war. Even Nostradamus predicted there would be a war in the seventh month, particularly, of 1999. And that's exactly when the Kargil conflict happened. And at that time, again, an attack was launched against the Pakistani nuclear facilities, which, if it had occurred, it would have led to a world nuclear war. It was prevented by the grace of God. So it's possible, again, <laughs> although it looks like we are face-to-face, -face, as Imran Khan said, like in Cuban Missile Crisis, 1971, the United States and, uh, excuse me, 1961. United States and the Soviet Union were eyeball to eyeball, face to face, in a nuclear uh, standoff. This is the first time it's been so close to a nuclear war since 1961. India and Pakistan are facing each other over Kashmir, and it looks like a nuclear war could happen. But it can be prevented. God can do anything. He can prevent it. So let us all pray and sincerely try and do our best uh, that that war can be prevented somehow or the other. And that India and Pakistan can give up this foolish, understandable, but foolish uh, conflict. Let Pakistan and India give up the enmity, the misunderstandings, the hatred, and let us all recognize our common humanity we are all servants of the same God. Therefore, we all have the same religion, which is love of God, service of God, love of humanity and service of humanity, love of all creation, service of all creation. That is the common religion. So on that basis, let us end these misunderstandings and these conflicts based on narrow concepts or misunderstandings of religion. My religion is this, your religion is that, therefore we must fight. No, that is a serious problem that we must stop. Prayer is powerful. We can all pray. Maybe we should just pray right now. <laughs> oh God, please be merciful. We really need this. We really need the mercy of God. So let us all from our hearts pray for the mercy of God. God is all merciful. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the Merciful, the most compassionate, the Lord of mercy. God is especially characterized by mercy, so we can appeal to the mercy of God. Please do something to stop this impending disaster. Okay, Babar Ahmed Khan says, Only ISI 1, I found it free from all sorts of prejudice. And then Babar, Babar Ahmed Khan goes on to say, British military is the only one I found it free from prejudice. Well, the British military definitely was not free from prejudice. Uh, what the British military did, I was right there myself. I was too young to remember it, but I learned from my parents exactly what had happened. I was born in 1947, just before the division of India and Pakistan. My parents were working in Khanewal in western Punjab, which became part of Pakistan. And we were at that time during the hot months of the summer in Masuri, in India, and uh, we had to get back to our home in, Kash in, in Khanewal. So we went on the last train that went from India to Pakistan. And it was crystal clear. <laughs> I don't, the British military are not free from prejudice, but they're very expert. The British intelligence and government are very expert at concealing the truth. <laughs> that they were not free from prejudice. The British military easily could have facilitated 
Muslims from India going to Pakistan and Hindus and Sikhs from Pakistan going to India and could have protected them. They didn't do it. They weren't free from prejudice. In fact, the train that we were on, when we reached Amritsar, it was attacked by a mob. And fortunately, God's mercy, there was a Baluchistani regiment that had machine guns that was on that train. So they fired on the mob, and the mob, so many of them were killed, and the rest of them retreated. Otherwise, I have no doubt, all of us on that train would have been slaughtered, because that's what had happened on many other trains. So uh, don't think the British military is free from prejudice. No, they didn't do what they easily could have done. Could have made a much, much better effort. It all I blame it on Mountbatten especially. He could have made a much, much better arrangement for a much more peaceful transition of power and the creation of Pakistan and the independence of India. Uh, so don't think they're free from prejudice. Whether the ISI is free of prejudice or not, I won't say much about that. I think the ISI uh, is much better now than it was some years ago. I would say some years ago it was not free of prejudice, but I think now, fortunately, the leaders of the Pakistani military and ISI, just like the leaders of the Pakistani government, Imran Khan, are much better than the former leaders had been. And uh, I think it's a very, very good sign, very, very hopeful uh, for the future of Pakistan and the future of Indo-Pak relations, that the ISI, the Pakistani military, the Pakistani government have all come into the hands of good, sincere men and women who are not corrupt, who are not prejudiced. So I hope the ISI will increasingly become free of any sort of prejudice or misunderstanding. It is definitely moving in that direction, and let us pray that the Indian government and intelligence and military will also. In fact, I've said this before, and I will say it again now very plainly, the Indian military needs to intervene. If the Indian government tries to launch a nuclear weapon against Pakistan, which is not impossible, it's imaginable. And so, unfortunately, Imran Khan said, no rational person could think that, but unfortunately, there are some people who are not rational. So if the Indian government did decide to launch a nuclear weapon, I pray and I'm requesting the Indian military not to accept that order. This has actually happened in, in the United States. It's happened that uh, when nuclear weapons were ordered to be launched, American military hesitated and extraterrestrials actually intervened and prevented it. Not only the United States, other places also have launched nuclear missiles or tried to launch them and they were stopped by higher forces. So let us pray that uh, this nuclear war will be prevented again, which currently looks like it's very imminent, very possible at least. All right, Sam, Sam, Sam says, Mulana Fazal Rahman in Pakistan going to block capital city Islamabad. Any comments on this, sir? Um, I'm, my comment is that the Pakistan government and the Pakistan military and the Pakistan intelligence uh, are not going to allow this. They should not allow this. Uh, this sort of uh, anti-government and anti-military uh, activities are not necessary. Perhaps in the past <laughs> they would have been good when the government was corrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it is not appropriate and it should not be allowed. That's my comment. We are very lucky. All the world is very lucky, especially Pakistanis are very lucky that uh, there is such a good man as the Prime Minister and he has such a good wife who actually is his spiritual guide. Uh, Together, they are the best possible leadership that any country could have. So there should not be uh, protests against the Pakistani government or military or intelligence now because the quality of those persons leading these essential uh, aspects of Pakistani life are good people. So there should not be these protests and they should not be allowed. That's my position. Hamid Krolvi says, why South Asian people are more emotional compared to Western countries, in your opinion? 
Um, I would say, a very quick, simple answer, South Asian people are more spiritual. South Asian people are more cultured. Uh, so this sort of emotion, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but uh, I've seen it myself again and again and again. South Asian people, both India and Pakistan, because I was born and spent many years in India, and I was a resident of Pakistan for most of my childhood, although I went to school in India. So I've seen many Indian people, and I've seen many Pakistani people. Sri Lanka also. I spent a year in Sri Lanka. I've traveled through Afghanistan, <laughs> everywhere in South Asia. I've been to Maldives also. There the people are the same. All the South Asian people are very deep, spiritually, not ordinary people, in, and their emotions are admirable. Uh, they can be misdirected, of course. Emotion has a two-edged a two-edged sword, it can be misdirected and then becomes dangerous. So Pakistan and India have cultivated hatred towards the other, unfortunately, in the past. And that has made very strong emotions uh, with very good cause. The whole partition experience was so horrible, which, as I said, I blame on the British and the Western people who are not so emotional and sensitive and empathetic that they could have allowed that to happen. Um, but anyway, the people are emotional, but they are also spiritual, very deep. I've seen it. The more hospitable, especially in Pakistan, especially in northwestern Pakistan. <laughs> the people are, of Pakistan are so hospitable. In India also there's a tradition of hospitality. So this has to do with empathy, with sympathy, with appreciation of other people and other cultures. And um, very good question. Thank you very much. I think it's, it is very true. And I think the reason is it's, not, it's, it's the culture, too. Both the Muslim and the Hindu culture has a tradition of respecting others, uh, especially guests. Uh, so there's an incredible amount of beautiful hospitality and concern and appreciation for others in both Hindu culture and Muslim culture. Of course, it's very sad to say, I must say this because I've observed this also, that Islam, which is a very, very peaceful uh, religion, actually the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a very gentle man. And he did not like wars. He did not like conflicts. He certainly uh, did not like aggression. Uh, unfortunately, in some later time, uh, some leaders of the governments of Muslim countries took a different stand. They themselves were not empathetic. Uh, they themselves were not sympathetic, and they did uh, use emotions in a negative way. Uh, but that is not Islam. So real Islam is very, very, like Hinduism, really, very, very sympathetic, empathetic, considering that a God is in everyone's heart. This is why Hindus bow down to each other. Namaste means I salute the God in your heart. I salute God who is in your heart. So that is a natural part of Hinduism, is to be respectful and uh, gentle and kind to others. And it's also a natural part of Islam, following the example of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Every Muslim should be kind and gentle and loving, uh, even to enemies. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was incredible when he uh, conquered Mecca, after the Meccans had spent years trying to kill him and the Muslims, and attacking Medina and with huge forces, and God always protected the Muslims. Uh, when he then was able to return to Mecca and conquered, actually it was hardly a fight. The Meccans realized they can't uh, oppose him now, and they were expecting that they might all be slaughtered or enslaved, but he just forgave them all. Incredible. Absolutely unprecedented in human history that I know of, that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, totally forgave all of his enemies when he returned and took over Mecca. So that is the example that Muslims should follow. And uh, let us pray <laughs> that the Muslims become good Muslims, the Hindus become good Hindus, or to make it more simple, as Guru Nanak said, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. If all of us human beings, all of us servants of God, realize that we are all part of one uh, family, we're all descendants of the same Adam and Eve, or Manu and <laughs> Shatarupa, I think was the name of the original Adam and Eve in the Hindu tradition. So, But we're all, all human beings are part of one family. 
So we should work together as brothers and sisters, and we should not fight each other. Uh, so let us pray that sanity will reign, and that uh, the emotions, the deep spirituality of both Indians and Pakistanis, and Sri Lankans and Afghanis <laughs> will prevail, and uh, we will all come together in love and unity. Kashmir, let Kashmir become a cause of love and harmony between India and Pakistan, working together to run the external affairs of Kashmir, and the Kashmiris are given full independence to run the internal affairs of their country. All right, let us see if we have any other questions. Muhammad Ilyas, why does India say that Kashmir is its integral part? Uh, Ang, but then refuse to talk about Kashmir on an international level. <laughs> Very good question. Well, the obvious reason is because the international level means the UN, which has passed 11 resolutions in favor of Kashmiri independence, or at least the freedom of the Kashmiri people to decide their future. Uh, there was supposed to be a referendum in which the Kashmiri people decided their future. That was the UN that's the international level. So, of course, India does not want to <laughs> talk about that because everybody knows if there was a referendum, the Kashmiri people would not choose to join India. Maybe if, although it's unlikely in the past they might have, but certainly now it's totally impossible. Probably not one Kashmiri, <laughs> at least not one Kashmiri Muslim, would want to join India now, seeing what the Indian government has done to them. Uh, so why does India say that Kashmir is its integral part? Um, because that's what they feel. <laughs> the Indian government is certainly the BJP and the RSS type of Indians. Uh, they feel that not only Kashmir, but uh, Pakistan also, Sindh and Baluchistan even, <laughs> and Bengal, East Bengal, Bangladesh, these are all integral parts of India. They should be made part of India. And that's why India is now claiming not only Kashmir, but also the northern areas of Pakistan as integral part of India. So this is because of their idea that India is a Hindu Rashtra. The whole of South Asia was supposed to be uh, under the control of Hindus. And the Muslims came in and took over. And then the Christians came in, the British came in and took over. So that was horrible what happened to us. Now we must reestablish uh, India as an integral uh, integral. Akhand Bharat. So that is part of the philosophy, you might say. That's part of the religion, almost, of uh, Hindutva Vadis, the fundamentalist Hindus who really feel this way. So um, that's why they think Kashmir now should be an integral part of India. And of course, uh, unfortunately, I would say, but that there have been resolutions, there have been agreements which the Kashmiri government agreed to that uh, Kashmir is an integral part of India. So once that happened, then India cannot let it go. <laughs> so I've said many times that India will never let Kashmir go because it is an integral part of India. They feel that way. And uh, that can be accommodated. Yes, let Kashmir be an integral part of India. And at the same time, an integral part of Pakistan. <laughs> so let Kashmiris be citizens of both India and Pakistan. That will lead to love and trust and unity and harmony between Pakistan and India. Seems impossible? Yes. But all things are possible with God. Even the impossible is very easy for God to do. So let us all pray sincerely that God will guide us uh, to that impossibility. <laughs> okay, Sam, Sam, Sam says again, as you said many times that Pakistan will have a leading role in the world so what do you think? This is the beginning now? Yes, of course. Uh, it has been happening for some time, but this is, yes, this is the beginning. Uh, we will see this. Not too long, God willing, that we will see that Pakistan will take a leading role in establishing peace and harmony in the world. Okay. Muhammad Ah Abir Mujahid. Salam from Pakpatan Sharif. MashaAllah. Pakpatan is very, very holy place. Baba Farid Ganj 
Shakar Rahmatullah. Is there? I met him there. <laughs> he didn't die a few hundred years ago. He's still alive, and he is actually giving us this guidance. He and Baba Dada, da, Dada, Tata Sahib, and other saints are living and giving guidance to uh, sincere Pakistanis and Indians and all people of the world who want it, and they are protecting and guiding Pakistan. So, we are very fortunate to live in Pak Patan Sharif. Rohini Sorab Khan, I'm happy to see you. Kya jang hogi? Lagta hai jang hone wala It looks like there will be a war. I think that is the destined future. But God, inshallah, will change it. We all will pray that this war, which looks imminent, what else can happen when the curfew in Kashmir is listed, lifted? What else will happen? The Kashmiri people will rise. They will protest, and the Indian government will suppress them. There will be a bloodbath, and then there will be war, because the Muslim world won't tolerate a genocide of Kashmiris like that. So, huh, Jang Hogi, there will be a war. But let us pray, and God can do it. Let us pray that this war, which looks imminent, will be prevented, will be avoided. We do have free will. God does have free will. <laughs> he has supreme free will. He can do whatever he wants. So let us pray that he will stop this war. Acha Muhammad Abir Mujahid says, Sir, you said we should pray that love prevail in the heart of Modi and his cabinet. But if it's not happened, there would be a bloodbath which will lead to a war between Pakistan and India. That's your prediction of Kashmir? Um... Well, yes, <laughs> that's what I've been saying. Uh, that's what it looks like. I think I think uh, every intelligent person who looks at that, even President Trump knows that this is very possible. That's why he has offered to mediate. He wants to prevent this war between India and Pakistan. But unfortunately, he is uh, a businessman, a very good businessman. He's a patriotic American, very patriotic American, and he sees that it would be very good for in, for America to have a big market of 1 billion, 200 million Indians, so he doesn't want to speak against India or say anything against India. Uh, so people know that a war is imminent, uh, but they are attached to uh, their national benefit or their personal benefit or they, their religious benefit, and they cannot... They cannot uh, prevent what's happening. They cannot. They could. President Trump could come out with a very powerful, strong statement saying war between India and Pakistan is imminent. It must be stopped. The easy way to stop it is for uh, the Indian government to withdraw from Kashmir, to give the Kashmiris their Indian in, 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 internal independence. And if the Indian government won't do this, we will boycott India. We will... An Indian government is also led by a businessman, <laughs> Chaiwala at least. He would also immediately accept, if he knew that India's economy would be destroyed totally by an American and whole world boycott, then he would withdraw from Kashmir. So President Trump has that free will. He can do that too. Will he do it? Let us pray that he will. Muhammad Abir Mujahid says, Sir Zayed Hamid Sahib is also warning for the war. Sir Zayed Hamid Sahib, I consider him one of my murshids. He is a very, very intelligent, extremely intelligent man. He knows. He is the one actually who has saved Pakistan from dismemberment by the, what should I call them, the Western, <laughs> not only Western, by the enemies of Pakistan, uh, including not only India, but Israel and uh, the what we call the cabal, the Illuminati, they had a plan to dismember Pakistan. They even had a Baluchistan separate, Sindh separate, Northwest frontier separate. That was their plan, and they would have done it. But Sir Zayed Hamid Sahib understood this, and he warned the Pakistani government and the Pakistani military about it, and they acted on his warnings. They understood and acted on them, and they prevented. And of course. God intervened also and prevented that from happening. So I have great respect for Sir Zayed Hamid Sahib.
and he is right to warn for war. And let us pray, however, that it can be prevented because it will be horrible suffering for not only Pakistan and India, but the whole world will suffer tremendously if there is a nuclear war. Kabran Ali Abbasi, sir, I am from Khairpur Mirs near Larkana, where you have lived and visited Bhutto's house. Yes, I have been to Khairpur Mirs also in Larkana. And I had a wonderful experience in Larkana where I saw the people of Larkana, as the Sindhi people generally, are very, very open-minded and loving. And Hindus and Christians and Muslims in Larkana uh, were joyously together, <laughs> living together happily. That was, I, I, I assume it's the same still, I don't know, but it was that way many years ago, maybe 30 years ago, <laughs> when I, was, I spent some time in Larkana. Very wonderful city. Lisa Osama, Salam, sir, how are you? I am okay, thank you very much. Mohammed Ghaznafar Abbasi, Trump is with India. Well, as I just said, he <laughs> is with the 1.2 billion market of India. Uh, he himself is doing business with India, and he wants America to increase its business with India because he sees there's a huge market there. So I wouldn't say he's with India. He... He, is, uh, he thinks that the best thing for America is to take advantage of the huge market in India. Therefore, he is expressing some favorableness to India. But he also is favorable to Pakistan. Uh, Trump actually loves Pakistan. He sees that Imran Khan is a very, very uh, elevated person. He sees that Imran Khan is honest. Uh, he sees that Imran Khan is not corrupt. He sees that Imran Khan is an intelligent and loving man. So Trump is not against Pakistan, but he is unfortunately more swayed by the American interest of the business opportunities in, in India with a huge market. So let us pray that President Trump turns towards God and gets guidance from God to if India doesn't want him to mediate, he says he can't mediate because both parties don't want it, but he can take a strong stand and tell Modi, you must withdraw from Kashmir. You must lift this curfew. You must give the Kashmiris in internal independence. Otherwise, we will not do business with you and your economy will collapse quickly. <laughs> China can do the same thing. Russia can do the same thing. England, France, Germany... All the countries of the world, all the Muslim countries of the world certainly should do this. Uh, and when India is embargoed, when there is a boycott of India, immediately, Modi is an intelligent man, immediately he would uh, reject the Hindutva idea because he sees that it would destroy India to maintain this. So let us pray that Trump and others uh, do this. Muhammad Abir Mujahid, <laughs> you have a lot of good comments here, sir. And there are predictions of Naimutullah Shah Wali, and according to him, this war will be fought for six years, and then Pakistan will conquer India, as you said in your yesterday's video. Is this that time as predicted by Naimutullah Shah Wali? Uh, it would appear to be, yes. So let us pray that Pakistan conquers India in love without a nuclear war, and that the Indian people themselves recognize the truth, and they invite Pakistan to come and take over uh, and help us get rid of this, uh, what should I say, demonic government. The Indian government, sadly to say, has become demonic, has become satanic. Uh, as I said yesterday in my Urdu chat, the motto of India is Satyam Eva Jayate, truth conquers, truth wins. Unfortunately, the Modi government has taken the policy of deceit. Uh, by deceit, we conquer. Um, <laughs> and total lies. He is lying like anything about what's happening in Kashmir. Uh, and he thinks he can get away with it, but he can't get away with it. God is watching everything. I said yesterday, Mr. Modi, do you think there is no God? Do you think God is not concerned about truth and justice? You think God doesn't know what's happening in Kashmir? You think God will tolerate it? No, God will not tolerate the crimes, the 
war crimes, the genocide, the horrible, horrible thing that you are doing in Kashmir, Mr. Modi, God will not tolerate it. And he will retaliate, <laughs> you can say. He will respond, and India will be broken up in little pieces. If you try to, if you persist in this Kashmir uh, genocide, uh, God will not allow it, and India will be broken up. So, yes, this appears to be that time. Sam, Sam, Sam. Right now, all the countries are looking for their own business benefits, and no one wants to talk about Kashmir. So what is the future of United Nations? Ah, very good question. Very good point. Yes, it's exactly what's happening. All the countries are looking for their own business benefits, and no one wants to talk about Kashmir. So the future of United Nations? Um, future of United Nations. Well, you know, the United Nations really has never been the United Nations, what it's pretended to be. It has always been controlled by a few uh, powerful and wealthy countries. And uh, we do need a real United Nations, uh, which is not controlled by demonic, selfish people. And what is its future? It's a very good question. I haven't really thought about it that much, because all along, not all along, but maybe for the last 20 or 30 years, I've realized that the United Nations is not at all what it's uh, pretended to be and what we hoped it would be to establish world peace. That's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> but it has not established world peace. So just the opposite. So uh, the United Nations must change, let us put it that way. The Security Council must become an open thing. It should not be controlled by a few countries. And uh, if the United Nations becomes a real United Nations, then it can establish peace on Earth. So I think Pakistan will have to lead the United Nations to real world peace because the current United Nations is not going to do it. Pakistan and India, and Kashmir especially, can show what real peace is and how peace can be established when we give up our false ideas of separate religions. As I've said, again, even today I said, uh, Guru Nanak said, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. Actually, he's right. This is an imagination that we are separate religions. There is only one religion. There is only one God. Therefore, there is only one religion. So let us, the Kashmiri people know this. Kashmiri people are very, very deep, spiritual, intelligent people. Even, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, Karan Singh, who was, he was the uh, Maharaj of Kashmir's son at the time of independence, and he became in the Sadr Riyasat of Kashmir. He was the president, you could say, of Kashmir. He's a friend of mine. I've met him quite a few times. And uh, he is a wonderful man. He deeply appreciates Islamic culture. He knows how wonderful Islam really is. So Kashmiri people, Kashmiri Hindus, know how good Islam is. And Kashmiri Muslims, uh, they appreciate Hinduism, much more, at least they used to when I was there. I was in Kashmir myself many years ago. The Kashmiri people are so gentle. The Kashmiri people are wonderful, deep, spiritual people. And they appreciate, they're not narrow-minded, like some <laughs> so-called Muslims are very narrow-minded. But the Kashmiri people are not, like the Sindhi people. Very open-minded, very uh, loving people. So the Kashmiri people especially, and the Pakistani and Indian people, who are all deeply spiritual can establish peace and love in South Asia, then the United Nations will follow. Hmm? God willing, let us pray this happens. Muhammad Ghasnafar Abbasi goes on to say, yes, Pakistan is ready to accept Trump as mediator, but India isn't ready here. What can one do? We can pray, <laughs> and we can remember that God is all-powerful, and we can boycott India. That's what I've been also calling on. Uh, let us boycott India. Let us encourage the world to boycott India. And uh, India will have to accept mediation on Kashmir. And the situation in Kashmir will also make the intelligent Indians wake up and realize what our government is doing there is horrible. It's the worst. It's genocide. It's war crimes. And the Indian people themselves uh, will force their government to accept mediation, whether it's Trump or whoever, and to come to a peaceful settlement in Kashmir. Um, let us pray the Indian people do this 
This is what Hinduism requires of you, my dear Indian Hindus, my dear friends. You don't know your own religion. Your own religion is based on love. Prema pum arto mahan. Very clear statement. In Hinduism, love is the supreme goal and purpose and method of human life. Love. That is also the teaching of Islam. Muhabbat sab se mazboot amal hai Islam mein. Love is the most powerful act in the Islamic tradition. So if the people of India and the people of Pakistan and especially the people of Kashmir uh, learn that the real teaching of all religion is one, all religion is love, then God willing uh, we can induce the government of India to accept mediation of Trump or whoever. And if they don't, uh, then let us pray that the government comes in India that will. Because I've said many times, Rahul Gandhi, Rahul Gandhiji, <laughs> is not uh, a fanatic. He is not a Hindutva Vadi. And he will be willing to accept friendship with Pakistan and settling the Kashmir dispute in a way that is very reasonable and very beneficial for everyone, especially the Kashmiri people. Give Kashmiris their internal independence, let them run their own affairs, and let Pakistan and India join together to manage the external affairs of Kashmir. Muhammad Ghaznav Rabasi, you have so many <laughs> comments. And how you predict and picture this world after 20 years from now, particularly subcontinent Europe and Middle East. Thank you very, very much <laughs> for your wonderful question. I can't say if it's 20 years or 10 years or 50 years, but I can say with 100% certainty the picture of this world is world peace. There will be world peace established. You read that there will be world peace. So that is my 100% certain prediction. <laughs> Let us pray that it doesn't mean a nuclear war first. Let us pray that God will prevent a nuclear war from happening and we can have world peace without such horrible Armageddon. God can do it, even though it's destined. I have said many My signal is getting cut off again, but I just said that God can change destiny. So even though it's true, this Armageddon is predicted all scriptures that I know of, Native American traditions also talk about a horrible time of suffering followed by world peace. All over the world, these, this knowledge is there. But God can minimize, he has minimized that suffering. And let us pray that we can get that world peace uh, without having to undergo a nuclear war. Okay. Gamran Ali Abbasi, Sir Ghazwe Hind is last war between good and evil, which is called Armageddon, yes. And in Hindu tradition also, there is a last war, which is called Kurukshetra. <laughs> so there will be a last war. Let us just pray that it's not a nuclear war. Let us pray it's a war in which love becomes the <laughs> dominant weapon. <laughs> and love is more powerful than atomic bombs. The name of God is the most powerful. So let us all call on the name of God constantly, whether it is Allah, 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 Adonai, 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 Ram, 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 Ikom ka, Ikom ka, Ikom ka, Ikom ka, Ikom ka, Toi ni, Toi ni, Toi ni, Toi ni, Toi ni, Toi ni, Toi. God is all-powerful. God is all-merciful. Let us pray to God that he will bring peace on earth without a horrible suffering. Sam 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 says, Imran Khan's speech on Kashmir 2019 and Indira Gandhi's speech on 1971 before she sent troops to Bangladesh, almost the same. If you heard that speech of Indira Gandhi, we never thought history will repeat so quick. <laughs> well, I... I will do that. I will study Indira Gandhi's speech on 1971. Uh, I've never read that, but uh, yes, they did. The Indian 
government was responsible for the success of Bangladesh becoming independent. And uh, let us see what happens in Kashmir. <laughs> all right. I think that's enough. Thank you all very, very much. And let us all pray again that Kashmir becomes Baisi Nafrat Nahi, Balki Maisi, Baisi Mohabbat. Not the cause of hatred, but the cause of love. God willing. May God protect us all.